Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is Monday, May the 25th of 2015, and my camera is being a total jerk with its focus. Why wow, you gotta be like that? Okay, there we are, I think. What you're looking at is my latest computer acquisition, courtesy of YouTube user Videosun Frontier. And um, if you want to see me unbox this video, along with Videos on Frontier and Elmo 3 on Skype, just check the previous video in, in this series. Um, you watch me first boot it up and everything. So this video is more of a uh, more proper overview of the system. And um, this came all the way from Scotland, of all places, so it traveled... Um, Quite a distance to get here. It took a month to get here, so, but it was well worth the wait. These are very, very interesting little computers. Um, kind of rare too. Um, I guess this is what was considered at the time a sub notebook. This dates from the year 1997, I believe. And um, the specs of it, it has a. 75 megahertz Intel Pentium processor, no MMX, obviously. Has an 850 megabyte hard drive and 16 megabytes of, of memory, and believe it or not, speakers. So this is multimedia capable. And as you can imagine, this thing is very, very small. I mean really, really small. This is my hand. To put it in, in even better perspective, here is a VHS tape. The libretto is just slightly bigger than the VHS tape. <laughs> so yeah, just to kind of put the size in perspective there. Let's take a quick little overview. Um, on the front here is where the battery would go, but, but Jay was unfortunately unable to send the battery along with it due to um, custom customs regulations, which is very understandable. I, will, I would love to get a new battery for this, but unfortunately the cheapest one on eBay right now is $100. And this is because the system itself is quite rare, so the batteries are going to even be even more rare. Which is unfortunate. Oh well. But I do have AC power for it. And there went the AC power. <laughs> On the right here you get the power jack. A reset button, um, which you just hit with a um, something like a paper clip. And a PC MCIA slot, which is occupied by something else that Jay sent me along with it. An Epson PC MCIA adapter for compact flashcards. Now, you've seen me use compact flashcards in a lot of older computers like Packard Bells and the whatnot, but um, this one isn't necessarily used as a hard drive. This one is used as extra storage, kind of like a second hard drive, which adapts into um, a PC MCIA slot. And with this adapter, you plug in your CF card. I'll just pop the CF card out of this, and you'll see that's just a standard Transcend 4 gigabyte CF card. Um, I keep all my old computer games on here, since it's kind of kludgy to have a CD-ROM drive hooked up to this, especially when you're in bed or something, so it makes more sense to just copy them all onto a CF card and put them in there. There you go. They're all there. I do need to get a bigger one, though, um, because I only have like a couple hundred megabytes left on this four gigabyte card, so yeah, I'm going to have to get maybe an eight gig one at some point. I'll pop that back in. On the back, um, you get an infrared port and a headphone jack. Um, this is actually a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, so standard headphones or anything that uses a standard headphone connector will not fit in this. 
Instead, what you have to do, and of course I lose it as I'm making this video. Oh, there it is. I got this last week. It's You have to use this um, little adapter which converts 2.5 millimeter plugs to 3.5 millimeter plugs. So just pop that in there. Take your headphones. It's amazing how well prepared I am for these videos. Not. Take your regular headphones and plug it right in and it's that simple. Get that out of the way for now. And on the left side you get nothing. Although you, this is actually where the hard drive goes. Um, it's a lot simpler to remove than you would think. You just take out these two screws here. One's already missing, but just take out this screw and slide this out, and there's the hard drive. It just uses a standard size um, laptop hard drive, um, just like this. Although um, it's this one is obviously IDE, while this is SATA. Don't believe you can use a SATA drive in this system. It's quite a bit old for that. And um, let's open it up. I think I believe this is a seven inch or an eight inch um, display. Um, re resolution is six forty by four eighty, and believe it or not, it's Active Matrix, which is really nice. Um, used to be a Pentium sticker there, but I guess it's long gone. And you get the tiniest keyboard ever. <laughs> and it actually does work. It's a full-fledged um, Windows-style keyboard. And this is actually a UK layout because, well, this came from the UK. Although it's... The way this one's designed is really not that different from a regular American-style keyboard, so... Not much of a learning curve, <laughs> which is always nice. You get your one speaker there. It is mono unless you plug in um, headphones or external speakers into the headphone jack. And you get the power button up here. And you get four LEDs for power, hard drive, battery, and power. And possibly um, one of the more interesting aspects of this laptop, the built-in mouse. You see, this is, um, on a lot of laptops, um, you will find in the middle of a keyboard a track point, which is most commonly seen on um, IBM and Lenovo ThinkPads, as well as other um, Toshiba laptops of the time, like my Toshiba Satellite 2505 CDS. But obviously, this libretto is a little too small for something like that, and much less a touchpad. So, um, to accommodate a mouse, what Toshiba did was something kind of cool. Um, they took the concept of the track point, which would be right in the middle of the keyboard usually, and moved it up to here, on the right side of the screen. And you just um, put your th you position your thumb on it, and you move it around, and you can move the cursor. Um, I'll I'll show you how it works better once we get the system up and running. And on the back of it, there are these two buttons right here where your middle finger and index finger rest on. The This one right here being left click, this one right click. So it's actually a pretty clever design. It does take a little bit of time to get used to it, but once once you do get used to it, it does make sense and it works really, really well. One more thing before we um, plug it up and turn it on. Let, let's say um, you need to plug in a, a serial um, device or a parallel device. Or you need to plug in an external VGA monitor. Well, you'll notice that there's something very important missing on the back here. There are absolutely no VGA serial or parallel plugs to be found on here. So that kind of leaves you 
in trouble. If you want to plug a printer up or a serial mouse or an external monitor. However, once again, Toshiba has you covered. With the libretto, you get this. This is what Toshiba no it called the Toshiba I.O. adapter. Pretty simple name, huh? With this, you get a serial, VGA, and parallel. And we'll try to do this with one hand, which will probably not happen. Let's see if this will work here. Uh, okay. Live television here, folks. As they say in the business. Okay, um, you take your um, I.O. adapter, but first, you, actually first you need to reach to the bottom of the computer and slide this down. And that's where you connect the I.O. adapter into. And then just line it up right, for one thing, and usually easier when you're not filming. Okay, and it's in. And then you just, there's these little thumb screws. Just screw them in. With your fingers, nonetheless. And voila. You now have extra connections. What you do lack, however, is, P is a PS2 port, so if you want to plug in a PS2 mouse, well, you're pretty much out of luck. You're left with only serial. <laughs> so, oh well. So I guess there's nothing else to do than to uh, give it power wherever it went. This did not come with the um, power cord, by the way. However, my um, power cord for my Satellite 2505 CDS works just fine. And we have power. We got a power LED, so away we go. It's a clicky hard drive there. Get a power on self test. Still running off the original um, Windows 95 OSR2 install that Jay put on here for me. We both have similar tastes in software, so I didn't have to do too much adjusting. Mostly just adding stuff I wanted that he did not have. That's a loud hard drive, huh? <laughs> Whoa! Well, we have sound, obviously. <laughs> Needs to be turned down, though, as you can tell. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my tripod and see if we can make this video a lot less shaky. Okay, that should be a lot better, um, I hope. So, let's dive right into this. Um, as you can see, this is a full-fledged Windows 95 computer. The size of a VHS tape, roughly. <laughs> You know, I still find it hard, hard to believe that they were able to, to do this in 1997. It, 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 it just boggles my mind that something like this existed, but I guess only um, the corporate market was um, aware of its existence back then. In fact, these still go for um, like at least $100 on eBay. So, Jay, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you are, 
I owe you one, buddy. <laughs> so, um, let's uh, see what we got installed on here. Go through our usual tour. Actually, first I want to turn the volume down. <laughs> That's a little too... There we go. Alright, let's head into the start menu. You got your standard Windows 95 accessories. The Microsoft Best of Entertainment Pack. A few DOS games, which... Um, this does a pretty good job at playing DOS games, but... There are, there are a few that, well, destroy the system, unfortunately. Um, Jill the Jungle is one that pretty much locks the whole system up, whether you're in Windows or DOS mode. Which is a shame, because Jill the Jungle is a really good game. Hocus Pocus, that kills the system as well, unfortunately. Jazz Jack Rabbit works though, along with um, Sky Roads Christmas Special. Although um, Sky Roads does not have the sound effects, has the music but no sound effects. Kid Picks, Microsoft Bob because well, why not? <laughs> Microsoft Bookshelf ninety five. This was put on by Jay. Microsoft Works four point The Gus Games, online services. The Incredible Machine, some Toshiba accessories including Card Aid, Magnifier, and the Shortcut Bar. Three, all three of those I've really, I really haven't done much with. Uh, Toshiba Utilities including D Display Switch, Power Saver, Shutdown Utilities, and the uh, System Properties. And Monopoly and Scrabble, these were put on here by Jay, haven't tried those yet. And the software for the sound card, which is a Yamaha OPL3 SA. Same sound chip that's in my Satellite 2505 CDS, and by the way, it is a really good sound chip. Has really good FM synthesis, and just sounds amazing. No hiss, no nothing, just good old-fashioned sound. Uh, got Office 95, um, including... Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, those were added on by Jay. Go ahead and open Microsoft Word. It's a loud hard drive again. <laughs> I keep saying that, but it is. Okay, let's just try typing something up on this really small keyboard. My main problem with this is I have trouble reaching for the shift key. I'm a little I'm a little libretto from 1997. Someday I will grow up to be a big satellite. That is so stupid, Billy. There's no humor in that. Oh well, at least you can see the keyboard works. <laughs> no, we don't need to save that. Heck no. <laughs> and um, let's go into my computer and take a look at the system properties. Registered to Billy Core of Purple Place. That was from J. <laughs> Got Windows 95 version B, along with Microsoft Plus for Windows 95. I added it on there because, hey, why not? Head into Device Manager and see what we got. Um, I'll have to read it out too because I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. We got a Chips and Technologies video adapter, which 
I believe it's the same one that's in my Satellite 2505 CDS. Uh, got some kind of unknown PCMCIA card service. It's not hurting anything, so oh well. <laughs> Uh, PCMCIA controller and Yamaha OPL3 SAX sound system again very very good sound chip and here's my computer if you can even see it these did come with a with a external floppy disk drive that you would plug into your PCMCIA port but I do not have that but, but it still does show up in um, my computer, and we're not going to double-click it because I don't want to be sitting here for two minutes waiting for it to find a floppy drive that does not exist. Right, we'll go to, into the properties for the hard drive. We've got a little over a quarter free of it. It's, the capacity is a, is a mere 776 megabytes, but, but being such a small system from 1997 you gotta make some kind of sacrifice. I do plan to up to replace this hard drive with a um, actual CF card. I just gotta get the proper adapter for it, but the hard drive that's in it now is working well enough, so I'm in real no I'm really in no hurry. And this is the CF card I have in the PCMCIA slot. It's I labeled it data. It sees it as a second hard drive, interestingly enough. I pretty much use, this is pretty much my way of copying um, files and programs over to the computer since there's really no other reasonable way of doing so. See, I got all my games copied over here. And make things easier for myself when I want to play a game that's on this CF card instead of going through all these directories in my computer, I got to special folder on the desktop called games and here's all the games I play the most I got Arthur's Teacher Trouble, Chips Challenge, Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise, Freddy Fish Gus Goes to Cyberopolis, Gus Goes to Cybertown, Gus Goes to the Kooky Carnival Gus Goes to New, to New York and gets mugged on in, in an alleyway that never made it to fruition as a game <laughs> Just Grandma and Me, Let's Explore the Airport, Let's Explore the Farm, Let's Explore Putt-Putt's Garage where he keeps his dirty magazines, I mean, um, Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon, Putt-Putt Joins the Parade, Putt-Putt Saves the Zoo, Rough Spoon, Ski Free, Tetris, Berenstain Bears Get in a Fight, and the Tortoise in the Air. I guess we might as well show off one of these just to prove that despite how small this is and how underpowered it is for the time, this can game when you make a few modifications. By that I mean upgrade your hard drive and or add a CF card into the PCMCIA slot. <laughs> okay. What to play, what to play, what to play. How about Pup Pup Joints of Prey? We haven't seen that in a while. No, actually, nah, Pup Pup Goes to the Moon. I showed jo Pup Pup Joints of Prey in the 1510 Supreme video a couple months ago. Works just fine. Most famous last words ever conceived in a computer game. Putt Putt, 1993. <laughs> As you can tell, it's this one little speaker here is probably not the best speaker ever created in the history of mankind, but it does the job for what it is. 
And on something like this, well, you gotta, ex you gotta expect some kind of sacrifice. Plus, you know, I'm surprised something like this even has a speaker at all. Well, um, I would like my own computer room with a whole row of vintage computers all on one bench with a, um, with everything related to Carolina Circle Mall in that room. But we'll just make a firework. I'm just... I'm just speaking out of my throat. That's even possible. Oh, by the way, um, it's time to time for me to tell a funny story. Well, kind of funny. Today, while I was at work, the northern part of Greensboro and Guilford County, along with parts of Rockingham County, suffered a massive power outage, where ten thousand cu customers in this area lost power. Thankfully, um, the place I worked at did not lose power. However, my house did lose power, but I missed the whole thing because I was not here. And it was restored within a couple of hours. Want to take a guess at what caused the power outage? Well, it certainly wasn't the weather because it was a beautiful sunny Memorial Day. Nope. A black snake. That's all they said it was. A black snake caused it. They didn't say what the black snake did to cause 10,000 people to lose power in this area, but a black snake knocked the power out. I guess it ran into a, I guess it crawled into a transformer, into something in a substation. Who knows? But at least I wasn't here to, to witness it because power outages, as you know, are my worst enemy. Although it looks like Putt Putt's going to experience something much worse than a power outage. And as usual, Mr. Firebird just sits there and does absolutely nothing. that I don't want to spend all night with that game well normally I would but this is a video that I'm making and I don't want it to go on for three hours <laughs> uh, I guess I can show one more game off um, the old standby Gus Goes to the Kooky Carnival I've always loved this intro ever since I was a little. Another nice thing about having such a small laptop with a small resolution screen is that you don't have to worry about panel fitting. What are you laughing at? Click here to go to the carnival. No, why don't, why don't I click here and you take me to the beach? I haven't been to the beach in six years. Would really love to go back. But it ain't gonna happen this year, no! Okay, I'm gonna calm down now. This is a this is a family video. Let's all go to 
Okay, we'll start off with the sideshow as usual. As a running gag, I gotta stop the, so the song right at that point. <laughs> Oh, look, it's Kid Vid from Burger King Kids Club again. Oh, yeah, fax machines. Remember when, when those were a big deal? According to, the ba according to Back to the Future Part 2, um, fax machines will be running everything in the year 2015. Well, here it is, 2015, and, well, we still own a fax machine here, but it's not running our entire house. <laughs> okay, um... Yes, because identity theft is always fun for the entire family. Kidvid! Yeah, um, believe it or not, um, video calling did exist in the 90s. In fact, I think it was also around in the 80s, but in both the 80s and the 90s, it was more, more or less a novelty, and it cost a ton of money, and it really didn't work well at all. But thankfully, we got technology like Skype these days with high-speed internet, and, well, the future is now here, basically. <laughs> Which is one part of Back to the Future Part 2 and their vision of 2015 that we do have in the real 2015. Which I think is really, really cool. How about we go away from the carnival? There we go. Alright, enough games. We need to be serious now. <laughs> With a typical, old-fashioned canyon test. speaker might not be the best thing in the world, but the sound chip itself is amazing. Yep. Good old FM synthesis. Best kind of MIDI in the world. I, a lot of people do prefer um, software wavetable, which in some ways, um, software wavetable can sound really good, um, especially if you're using a um, sound card like a um, Creative Sound Blaster 128, which I have in my Compact Desk Pro. 
and its software wavetable sounds really good, but I'll always prefer good old-fashioned FM synthesis because it just sounds so old school for one thing, and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So, um, I'm getting kind of tired now, so I guess we might as well call this a video. Um, hope this video came out well enough. I hope you, um, if you, if you've stayed this long, I congratulate you. The shakiness from earlier obviously did not make you sick to your stomach. So, congratulations, you made it. So, with that said, Billy Core signing off.